been on the road for five days since leaving my home in southern Arizona. I rode through the southern grasslands, the deserts, Death Valley, through a lot of heat, through a lot of rain. Now I find myself where I camped last night here, Alabama Hills. An absolutely beautiful place to spend the evening. I slept the best that I've slept yet on this trip. This morning, I've just been lounging around the campsite, packing up my gear, getting ready for another day on the road. I'm carrying everything I need to live off my motorcycle for a couple months at a time. And that includes camping gear, cooking gear, and of course all of my filmmaking gear. I hope that you guys find this series to be entertaining and educational. And I welcome you to follow me for another day's adventure as we head north from California. Boy, I can just smell that wet sage off in the distance here. It must have rained recently because it just smells beautiful. And that's one of the things I love about motorcycling is that you just get to smell things along the way. You become a little bit more immersed in the environment. I got off the main highway and thought I would take some back roads. So now I'm driving down a, a sandy track through the flatlands here. And when I say sandy, it is sandy. And here's some ruts. Well, it is just a beautiful day for motorcycling. Summertime weather, 72 degrees, eastern side of the Sierras, absolutely a gorgeous day. I woke up this morning in Alabama Hills, which is on Highway 395 down by Lone Pine. And Highway 395 is the highway that goes north and south on the eastern side of the Sierra Nevada mountain range. And as far as highways go, I don't usually like to take highways or certainly not interstates, but Highway 395 is an exception. It's an exceptionally beautiful road. In many cases, it's a divided highway, so two lanes going north, two lanes going south. And so I'm never riding against oncoming traffic. There's always a passing lane. There's not a lot of truck traffic, and there's just beautiful scenery all around. So I really do enjoy riding Highway 395, and it's kind of the main north-south route. And these mountains over here to the left, there's limited opportunities to cross over them. Um, there are certainly high mountain passes that go. They can be separated by hundreds of miles. And so you really have to choose which side of the mountains you want to ride on or make sure that you're riding during a time of the year when the passes are open. And many of them don't open until June, so they could or should hopefully be open now, getting into late June. So I was sitting here at this little pullout south of Mono Lake and making uh, some decisions about where I might wanna go. And I decided, you know what, I've got the time. Why don't I actually ride a pass over the Sierra Nevadas, head north and ride back over in another direction. So we're gonna get two rides out of this, one going to the west over the Sierra Nevadas and then one coming back east. That's the beauty of this kind of travel, the freedom that it offers to those who are prepared and carry what they need. So here we go. I am right at the base of the Sierra Nevadas right now. And it just starts going up in elevation from here. You can see there's a stream with flowing water. That's snow melt. And I imagine we'll, when we get up there, we'll see some snow. Let's get on the road and head up into the Sierra Nevadas. Here we 
go up into the Sierra Nevada mountains. I figured, you know, why ride alongside of them all day? Let's just go up in them. So we'll get up into some beautiful high mountain country. It'll be nice and cool up there and forested. We'll find a really nice place to spend the night, hopefully by a mountain lake. I like to keep this trip changing. We've seen some beautiful desert scenery so far. So now we'll go up into the forested alpine country. I've got the GoPro mounted on my monopod on the back. So you should get a good overview of the scenery as we drive up this road. We're at 7,000 feet of elevation right now. All of the snow from last winter has melted, at least to this point. We'll see how it is up ahead. You can still see some of it on the mountain in the distance up there. Sometimes that snow can stay up there until pretty late in the year, like late July. And this road that we're going to be going on over the pass is rated G1 on the Butler motorcycle maps. And that's their highest rating, the, the gold standard of paved motorcycle roads. Twisting, turning, well-engineered, good scenery, everything that you want on your good paved motorcycle riding road. I believe this is the pass, one pass to the north of Yosemite. There's only so many ways you can get across these mountains here, and they all involve going up and over high passes that, that are closed in the winter time. Sonora Pass ahead, steep and narrow. We're getting into some good twisties here. close to the tree line now. You can see up on these mountains up ahead, there's no trees up there. Oh yeah, this is lovely country. And look at all the snow over here, patches all over the place. good road. Thanks Butler Maps for recommending this one. I don't think I've been down it before. And that's what I'm doing right now is going down Stanislaw Pass, Highway 108, Sierra Nevada Mountains of California. Picture perfect day of motorcycling. Just having fun mostly on the pavement today. been a spectacular day of riding as you guys have seen. I'm at this reservoir and I rolled in before sundown and I'm just parked right off the side of the road. There's actually a campground up the way but you know there was there was a couple spots left but I decided I'd rather be right here next to the lake all by myself. It's going to be a little quieter. It's peaceful. I'm actually going to go for a quick dip in the lake.
I'm really looking forward to cooking a hot meal tonight and drinking a little wine and just having a relaxing, chill evening here. Mm, this is going to be really nice. What am I gonna cook up today, you might be asking. Chicken ramen noodle soup. We'll put some real chicken in there too. We've got a couple little zucchinis, some sesame oil. Ooh, that smells good, sesame oil. We'll let these zucchinis cook up a little bit, then I'll throw the chicken in there and some spices. Then we'll cook up the noodles separately. Mix it all together, have a glass of wine, and call it a meal. I figured out that I can attach my little table to my panniers here, so I have uh, the ability to stand up when I cook, which is a little bit nicer. It's not the sturdiest thing in the world yet. You gotta try new things and then keep yourself entertained when you're out here in the back country. I'm gonna put some of this new sriracha salt on there too. Give it a little extra kick maybe just a little bit more sesame oil as well because it's so good i think those are about done i'm going to cook up some water now need just enough to fill up my noodles here and i'll put a lid on it because that makes it boil faster and we can save our fuel ah oh, what a great spot to be cooking a meal after a good day's ride get everything i need for a good night a couple little bottles of wine a hot meal a hammock by the lake, not too bad for day five. A packet of ramen can go a long ways when you add some extra spices and some fresh vegetables. And I will say, I like having this little camping table up here at standing level height. And you know, obviously it's a work in progress. I just came up with this literally tonight on the side of the road, but I wanna improvise and uh, make it better. Like my monopod here, which I really like. I'm using it for so many different things on this trip. GoPros to get that view over my shoulder, throw my mirrorless camera on it when I stand by the side of the road and I wanna talk, hanging the camp kitchen, my motorcycle jacket, my helmet. I've strung a clothesline from it. There's literally so many different things that this can be used for. And it's all about that principle of keeping yourself elevated. Keep yourself up off the ground, have a better time. Bon appetit. Mmm.